أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I begin in the name of the Almighty God, the Compassionate, the Merciful, the one who created everything in utmost perfection. And may the peace and blessings of the Almighty God be upon His pure and beloved Messenger, the peak of His creation, the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him and his immaculate progeny of the Ahlul Bayt, especially the leader of our time, the awaited Savior, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajrallahu Ta'ala Faraja. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون للذين آمنوا صدق الله العلي العظيم illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat اللهم صل على محمد As we continue our exploration into the first general ziyarah of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, we come across a very profound phrase, a very bone chilling sentence in this amazing ziyarah. Ashhadu anna damaka sakana fil khul. I bear witness that your blood, O oh Aba Abdullah al Hussein, has lived in eternity or in eternal paradise. And the bearers of the throne, or the carriers of the throne, or the shadows of the throne, have trembled because of your blood. Indeed, the blood of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam transcended the seven heavens into Jannat Al Khuld, which is the closest place to the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, literally and also symbolically. Historians tell us that on the 10th day of Muharram, as Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam was surrounded by the enemies from all directions and the arrows were raining down upon him one particular arrow which was a three-pronged arrow it was shot at the Imam salam, and it landed in his chest it landed in the heart of Al Imam Al Hussein salam. the Imam salam, he took the arrow from behind his back and he took it out the blood started flowing and gushing from the chest of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam. He raised his head to the sky and he said, Bismillah wa billah wa fi sabilillah wa ala millati rasulillah. Then he said, Oh Allah, you know very well that I am the only person on the face of the planet who is a grandson to your messenger. And yet they are killing me. Then the Imam salam takes his blood. He fills it in the palm of his hand and he casts it, he throws it into the sky. Those historians who saw this event, they witness that not a single drop of blood of the Imam salam came back to the ground. It went to the skies. The blood of Imam Al Hussein salam, transcended the heavens into Jannat Al Khuld, that highest level of paradise. We human beings, any action that we offer on the day of judgment, it takes on a particular figure. This is called in Islamic theology, Tajassumul A'mal, or the embodiment of actions. For example, when you pray, this same prayer that you are offering in this life transforms 
into a beautiful figure in paradise. For example, a nice beautiful garden or tree or a beautiful mansion or other blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you respect your parents, this act or deed of respecting one's parents translates into a beautiful figure in paradise. The same action itself becomes a figure. This is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam offered the most valuable deed that he had in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that was his blood. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the blood of al Imam al Hussein alayhi salam to transform into a heavenly essence. Narrations tell us that the blood of al Imam al Hussein alayhi salam decorated the paradise. The Jannatul Khuld, which is the paradise of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Ibn Abbas narrates, he says, once I saw the Prophet in my dream. I saw the Prophet collecting blood from the ground. I told him, Ya Rasulullah, what are you doing? What is this blood that you're collecting? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi told me, Oh Ibn Abbas, I am collecting the blood of my grandson Hussein. I am collecting it and taking it, elevating it to Jannat al Khuld. The blood of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam reached that highest level of paradise. This was the bridge that Imam al Hussein had with the afterlife. We all need a bridge, right? We need actions that help us get to the Akhirah. We need a bridge between this life and paradise. It's usually our good deeds. The bridge that Imam al Hussein salam had, which took him directly from this life, from this world, to the Akhirah and the highest levels of paradise, was his pure and sacred, amazing blood that he gave in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this passage in the ziyarah tells us that something else happened when the blood of Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam was connected to that eternal paradise. Something amazing happened. وَقْشَعَرَّتْ لَهُ أَظِلَّةُ الْعَرْشِ The shadows of the throne of God trembled and quivered and shivered because of the blood of Al Imam Al Hussein. As we contemplate this amazing passage in the ziyarah, we come across several important questions. Number one, what is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the essence of it? Number two, who are the carriers of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Number three, what is the special relationship between the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, and the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, what happened when the blood of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam shook the throne and the shadows of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the relationship between the, the blood of the Imam and the throne of Allah? And number five, what is our relationship, we human beings, we followers of Ahlul Bayt? What's our special link with the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The throne of Allah, Arshur Rahman. We always hear about the throne of God. The Holy Quran makes numerous references to Arshullah Azza wa Jal. What is this throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it a throne like any king would have, you know, this high fancy chair that we usually picture in our minds when we think about a throne? There are those schools of thought in Muslim history, those who ascribe anthropomorphic qualities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, human-like qualities. What do they say? For example, the school of Ibn Taymiyyah. What do they say? They say that Arsh rahman the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is something physical. It's actually a physical throne. It, it looks like a bed with four legs. It's higher than a chair. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually sits on this throne. 
And you know what Tabari narrates in his book and, and many other books from these schools of thought? They say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sits on the throne, it makes a squeaking voice. You know, when you buy new furniture, and you sit on it, especially if a heavy person sits on it, it makes a squeaking voice until it softens up with multiple use. So they claim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually sits on the throne and the throne due to the heaviness of God, it makes the squeaking voice. Another narration is more interesting. It tells us that when God sits on the throne, you know, there will be some space between him and the throne because Allah doesn't fill up the entire arsh there will be some space left and that space is the size of four fingers who sits next to him the holy prophet will sit next to him and they actually believe this is literal and subhanallah they accuse the followers of Ahlul Bayt of shirk when they have these outrageous narrations in their book you explain to me so they think of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in literal forms. However, when we go to the school of Ahlul Bayt, we realize that the arsh is not something physical. The arsh is symbolic. The throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala represents the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything, all the knowledge, all the information in the universe is contained in the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the fourth Imam of Ahlul Bayt, Al Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin alayhi salam. In one narration, he says, Timthalu kulli shay'in fil arsh. He says, The reflection of everything in the universe is contained in the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is stored there. All of our actions, every move we make, every incident that occurs in history, every event that takes place in the universe is stored in Arsh al-Rahman. So the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala symbolically represents the knowledge of the Almighty God. You know you have intelligence agencies, what do they do? They have a file on us. They have a file on you. In that file, they're recording your every move. All of our moves and all the knowledge out there in the universe is contained in the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here's one way of understanding how the Holy Quran has all the knowledge. Fi kitabin maknoon, in a hidden book. That hidden book is stored in Arshullah azza wa jal. In the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore all the knowledge is stored in it. It's contained in it. This is one way of understanding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way of understanding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Narrations tell us that the throne of God is the holiest place in existence in the universe. It's even beyond this physical universe that we see. And in the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the affairs of the universe are executed. When Allah instructs the orders, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants things to get done, those orders are executed in Arsh al-Rahman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this in the whole Quran. When he speaks about the throne, Allah says, Yudabbiru al-Amr. He manages the affairs of the universe from the throne. So the throne is extremely important. It represents the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And narrations tell us that the throne of Allah surrounds this universe. So what's actually enveloping the universe and surrounding it from all sides is Arshullah Azza wa Jal. The throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the Holy Quran tells us that there are carriers of this throne. Who are the ones who carry the throne of God? First of all, you have the angels. They carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you have the highest ranking angels of God carrying His throne. Jibra'il, for example. Ar-Ruh. 
Mikael, these highest ranking angels of God are the carriers of God's throne. In addition to that, you have more important beings who carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In one verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, eight carry the throne of God. Eight will carry the throne of Allah. Who are these eight? In one hadith, Al-Imam Musa Al-Kadhim Salawatullahi Alayhi He says there are four people from the ancient times and four people from the later times who carry the throne of God on the day of judgment. As for those from the ancient times, they are Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa and Isa. And as for the four ones who carry the throne of Allah from the later times, they are Muhammad wa Ali wa Hassan wa Hussein. These are These are the eight amazing carriers of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this serves to demonstrate the special link between the Ahlul Bayt and the throne of God. There is a very special link. Since the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala represents the knowledge of God, then those who carry the throne of God carry what? They carry the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who fully carry the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, and their master is the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They carry the knowledge of the Almighty God. That's one way of understanding the special link between the Ahlul Bayt and the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created was the light of Ahlul Bayt. In Ziyarat al Jama'ah, there is one passage that says, Allah created you as a light. And he allowed you to surround and circulate his throne. So way before anything existed in this universe, there was only the light of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, surrounding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. One narration tells us something else that is amazing about Lady Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. This hadith says that before Allah created anything, Fatima al-Zahra salam Allah alayha, her essence which is a light by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, she was under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worshipping him for such a long time. And her worship was this tasbih, subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. When you do tasbih at zahra remember that this was the ibadah of Fatima alayhi salam under the throne of God before Allah created this creation. Know the value of tasbih at zahra Many of us wonder, what's this emphasis on this tasbih? And why did the Prophet give this amazing gift to Fatima alayhi salam Realize the importance of this. This tasbih predates our creation and the creation of the universe. It was the energy that Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam found in worshipping the Almighty God. In another hadith, we have the Imam alayhi salam saying that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created 
أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله O oh Allah, hasten the reappearance of our master, Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. O oh Allah, make us amongst his sincere and dedicated servants. O oh Allah, grant us the ziyarah of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. O oh Allah, grant us the shafa'ah of Al-Imam al Hussein. O oh Allah, forgive us our sins. O oh Allah, all those who are suffering, all those who are ill, give them a speedy recovery. وَإِلَى أَرْوَاحِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ نُهْدِي ثَوَابَ سُورَةِ الْفَاتِحَةِ مَسْبُوقَةً مِنْ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدٍ